The Saffir-Simpson scale is a wind scale that is used to rate a hurricane. It's what we all focus on, truly, truly is, but maybe Matthew proved more than anything that it's, it's more than just a wind event. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, and in recent hurricanes, we've had the same issue, right? And Sandy back in 2012, which was, it wasn't technically even a hurricane when it made mm -hmm. landfall, but for all intents and purposes, it was a Category 1 hurricane, but brought a tremendous amount of water to, to, po to parts of, uh, of New Jersey and New right. York. But yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a case where uh, it was a Category 4 hurricane, so it wasn't as if we didn't have the winds with it. But when you look at the wind history, Mike, what's most interesting about this, this is Thursday, last Thursday at 11 o'clock when it was sort of approaching the east central part of Florida, is that the hurricane force conditions you have basically the lightest shade there is tropical storm conditions the darker shade of purple is hurricane <laughs> conditions and then that little the darkest area of purple that, that little area right around the four there that's what we call the radius of maximum winds that's basically where the strongest part of this hurricane is so the strongest winds were so combined that's where that's where if you're if you got a cat four that's where it is it's right within the really dark purple yeah and at this point i mean you were maybe 15 miles 20 miles of that strongest part of this hurricane it was well offshore even the hurricane conditions at this point were mm -hmm. offshore but you know, when, when folks see or hear a Category 4 hurricane is coming our way, they're expecting the worst of the conditions. Right. But the forecast was never for the worst of this to come across East Central Florida. So as this thing rolled its way past Florida here, we watched its, we watched its intensity. And, it, and, and when you look, you're just off, the, off Cape Canaveral here. Mm -hmm. You're talking major hurricanes still. You're a Cat 3. So if you're in Melbourne, you know, you're basically parallel with what's a Cat 3. And so maybe people, you know, along the coastline are thinking, Hey, I lived through a Cat 3. Mm -hmm. And I guess technically they did, but technically they didn't too. They didn't they didn't experience category 3 winds. Well, and you made this you made this point to me earlier, which is a, a good astute observation a lot of people don't know. Is we go back to that graphic and you can look and look at the the hurricane force winds and within that that dark purple area, the RMW, it's only at a point within that dark purple area that it's not even the whole purple area. It's not even a whole purple area. It's a point somewhere in there. We don't know exactly. Usually it's on the northeast side. Usually it's on that side of the hurricane. But it's just a point in there where we're seeing those whatever it was. I think it was, you know, category three. So it was 111 to 130 mile per hour winds. It's only at a certain point within that dark purple area. Uh, one of the key things, though, that happened on Friday was that going from the last, gra uh, the last uh, stop to this stop is that RMW, the radius of the maximum winds, even though this weekend, that expanded. Right. And so all of a sudden, the, the coastal threat, the wave threat, and the surge threat ramped up, even though the maximum winds came down. The wind threat began to come down, yep. but the other threats began to increase. And as this thing then made its way up the coastline here, decreased even more, kind of parallel with Jacksonville here, it's Cat 2, mm -hmm. but the first coast got nailed. We just showed the images yeah. of the major beach erosion there, but again, just a sliver, truly just a sliver of the yeah. coast is experiencing hurricane if, winds. If you weren't on the coast, and I, I've talked to folks that I know in the Jacksonville area, they're like, well, it didn't feel like a hurricane here. It's because, well, you didn't have hurricane conditions. For the most part, Jacksonville had tropical storm conditions, but those people that lived along the immediate coast, they felt this in terms of the wave impacts and the, and the storm surge impacts. Uh, when you include the waves, the water rise there was 8 to 10 feet in some spots and you saw the results in terms of the beach erosion and the coastal destruction here. What's amazing to me though about this particular part of the you know time frame in the storm was that it was it was weaker than originally forecast. Originally the Hurricane Center thought it forecast to be a category four hurricane here and also it was a little bit farther off the coast and it came in at low tide. So I hesitate to say that Florida got lucky because there are a lot of people that lost their homes and uh, and they had their homes flooded and severe damage to their homes right along the coast. But this could have been a heck of a lot worse. It right. really could have, and it's just a little bit of a, a you know a jog to the left or coming in at high tide or being a little bit stronger.